Good afternoon and good evening. It is a pleasure to welcome you to this extremely exciting opportunity to uh, work with wonderful faculty to hear about uh, the recross catheter device and its use in complex CTO processes, as well as traditional cases. We're thrilled to be supported to do this by IMDS. And I would like to just uh, briefly introduce myself. I'm Baroque Jaffer from Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, interventional cardiologist and CTO operator. With me on our panel today, we have two outstanding CTO operators. We're going to learn a great deal from them. The first is Dr. Alexandra Avran, who is the charge of the CTO program. Good evening. I'm in the Department of Interventional Cardiology at the Arno Zonk Institute. I did read uh, he also has an interesting background in sports medicine as an accomplished science master back in the day. Well, one day we'll hear about that. And um, in uh, association, uh, Dr. Andrew Lucking is an interventional cardiologist at the John Radcliffe Hospital at Oxford University. He has a really neat background in vascular biology and basic science, but has moved on to now the focus on taking care of complex patients and CTOs. Both Alexandra and Andrew will really help us understand the ability to use the recross device to improve our ability to do both true-to-true -true wiring and perhaps more unexpectedly, our ability to consider dissection reentry as well to use this device, which really has a great deal of versatility. I'm gonna let them in their graphics really to demonstrate what this device uh, can do and, and some of the engineering designs that have really allowed it to be a unique device. So um, with that, why don't we get started? And um, Alexandra, would you like to begin? Yeah, sure. So to start, so thank you very much for the invitation. Um, um, today it's a different world, but not antagonist world. Uh, I mean that uh, my experience in true to true is uh, quite good on improving with the recross, and I will show you why and how, but. I'm totally uh, um, capable to do ADR also with conventional devices, uh, so uh, stingray uh, balloon. So I'm very, very interesting uh, to hear uh, what the, the second uh, speaker will uh, explain to us about that. So to start, I just want to present my personal uh, feeling and how Recross modified my own CTO strategies uh, and also my educational teaching strategy in proctoring. I'm doing a lot of CTO cases and a lot of proctoring in France and Europe and Middle East. And uh, where the device is available, uh, no, it's a way of teaching integratedly uh, to use a recross. So to start, I want to share you my data. So comparing... 2019 and 2020. So in 2019, I've made 367 CTO cases. And in that cases, I just check what was my first intentional strategy. As, as you can see, integrate strategy was uh, my first strategy in 59% of cases. ADR was my first strategy in 11% and retrograde my first in 30%. So you have a failure. Uh, okay. But the point is now I will show you the same data in 2020. And then you can see that in 2020, I, I did quite the same number of CTO cases, but my integrate strategy was higher. 
67% and ADR and the retrograde was, were less. So why? I explained, I just want to, to understand why. And uh, this is the distribution of my successful integrate strategy. And then you can see that uh, in 2019, I succeed integratedly in 58% of cases with one wire or switching the wire. In 6% with parallel wire technique. And I can say the old fashioned parallel wire technique. And recross what was uh, beginning uh, in uh, 20, uh, uh, 2019. And I did uh, 15 cases with recross. So it was just the start. But then when you compare in 2020, uh, then my successful case with recross was uh, increasing a lot. So it came from six to 20 persons. So 15 recross devices to 44 recross devices. And also what I check, I check also the relations Ship between my initial CTO lengths and my integrate successful strategy. And what I uh, discovered is when I went true to true with wires only, with one wires, the, um, um, the length of the, my CTO was around 90 millimeter. When I switch wire, but only one wire by one wire, it was a little bit higher, so 20 millimeter. But with parallel wire technique, with recross, then I noticed that I am able to cross successfully, integratedly, longer CTO segments. So 27.5 millimeter. So that's why I modify a little bit my uh, um, way of thinking. So just the, to, to, to explain what was the old fashioned parallel wire technique. So uh, you can, you start with a wire, wire engaged in the proximal cap. Then you notice that the wire is uh, sub-antimal. So you, you change the wire, but next one is also subentimal. So what next? Next is trapping the subentimal wire, removing the microcatheter, go back with the same microcatheter and try to puncture the same cap and try to enter through lumen. So it was very exhausted that uh, that kind of old fashioned, but we were no, no other option at the moment. And then, so parallel wire technique is working very well. But now, what next with the recross? The recross, as you can see, has increased my integrated success because I can increase my support with an anchoring wire. I can puncture different parts of the proximal cap. I can advance my recross as a microcatheter inside the CTO body and use the lateral exit for parallel wire technique. And I can also easily deal with distal bifurcation. What is my new integrate strategy actually? So if I am in front of a CTO with a length less than 25 millimeter and I know where exactly is the proximal cap, so tapered or blunt cap. And if my retrograde options are not possible or too risky, actually my only integrated risk is what? Is that my wire is subentimal. So 
then I use recross as my first choice microcatheter in that situation. And if my first wire is in true lumen, so recross has a quite good profile to follow as a microcatheter to exchange for a workhouse wire. But if my first wire is submentimal, then I'm still ready for parallel wire technique and we, I don't need to uh, move and trap my microcatheter and come back with my microcatheter. So I just want to show you three cases from simple to complex. So the simple one is this LAD occlusion. So you can see it's a short LAD occlusion with a blunt cap just after a septal branch. So what I did, I did okay. In that situation, my anti-grade strategy is my best strategy. And my successful rate is quite high with integrate strategy. But the only thing I can I can't control is if my wire will be subentimal or not. So that's why I start with recross. Use the lateral blue enter to anchor in that septal branches. CTO wire in that case it was a Gaia third so in the distal white uh, port and you can see that my wire finally is in true lumen and I don't need the recross for parallel wire but I was already ready for that in case of then the recross is following very well and I can exchange my wire and finalize my uh, CTO case Second case is a quite little bit uh, complex. It's an RCA uh, occlusion with a side branches just in front of the proximal cap. And you can see that the retrograde option are, are not very sexy. Eh? So there is no retrograde visualization. And uh, uh, the only way to uh, deal with this uh, situation is to uh, work integrally and maybe switch for ADR in case of my wire are subentimal. So, same uh, way, first intention with the recross integrally, scion blue in the side branch with scion blue in the lateral blue enter and working with the distal one with the Gaia third. The Gaia is able to penetrate the proximal cap, advance inside the CTO segment, and unfortunately, my Gaia is uh, subentimal at the exit port, the distal port of the CTO. So what next? Next is using all the abilities of the recross. So I remove the side branch wire and then my recross is now a microcatheter, not a dual lumen microcatheter. And then the profile of the recross is quite interesting and is able to penetrate inside the body of the CTO. The length is quite long, eh? 30 millimeter. And now, my recross inside the body of the CTO, I can go with a second CTO wire with my lateral exit and try to do parallel wire technique. So that's what I did with a second Gaia third. And as you can see, the second Gaia third was in the lateral uh, exit. And the second Gaia third was clearly outside also the was subentimal but was clearly closer to the true lumen so then i go i came back with my first gaia wire on the the white exit that's a distal one and use it also 
as a parallel wire technique, uh, and I can work with both wire very freely. And uh, it's easy to, to exchange a wire, but here in that situation, I was not uh, exchanging the wire and I work with my second Gaia third. And this one was able to uh, cross finally integratedly. And we finalize the CTO with two steps. Then this last case is to show you that sometimes in some complex situation, the recross is a very good device when I want to go true to true. In that situation, it was a CTO of the circ, very, very uh, proximal to the ostium. And it's an instant CTO with two stents, one in the circ, one in the marginal. So I went with a fine cross and Confianza Pro 12 to puncture the proximal cap uh, very carefully inside the strut of the stent. Then I can advance like this and exchange with a Gaia third. And you can see that the point of the fine cross is following actually, and everything was good. And in here, you can see that my Gaia third is uh, as crossed in, tr in the true lumen. But unfortunately, my fine cross was unable to cross. It was uh, stuck at the enter of the second stem. So we increased the support with uh, extension of guiding catheter. So in that situation, it was a Gideon Hydro and also fine cross was unable to cross. So we went for with a very small balloon, uh, 1.0, absolutely not. So what next? Uh, next was to, uh, to use, finally, the recross. Just place the recross where he was unable to enter the, the CTO. And with the parallel wire technique, with a Confianza Pro 12 in the lateral blue exit, finally, we punctured in a different position in the second stent. And you can see here clearly that the wire went a little bit upper than the first one and was finally inside the two remain also. Then we exchange the recross because we were with the lateral one and we came back with the fine cross. We, we crossed very easily uh, finally. And this is the final result. So what I want to show you and my conclusion in that new device is for me, really, the recross has increased my integrate success. But not only the recross, but because there are also uh, in, uh, increasing of new wires, but the recross modify finally, my all CTO strategy by increasing my anti-grade success rate. And also, increasing my success rate anti -gradely for longer CTOs. As you, can, you have seen, we are free to use or exchange one wire or the other, and it's very comfortable. Um, more comfortable with than with a dual lumen microcatheter because then you have a monorail and you have all of the wire here both wire are over the wire then you can exchange it as you want then you are a facilitation to access side branch or distal bifurcation the recross has a quite good profile for a dual lumen microcatheter and I was very surprised that finally uh, it can follow most of time my, uh, my wire. 
So you have two devices in one, one microcatheter and also one dual lumen microcatheter, and you can trap it in six French. So that's why my integrate strategy has changed with the recross. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you, Alexander. And um, I know we want to show our, our viewers the, a picture of the device at some point. Andrew, will you have one in your slide as well to go through the specifications? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Oh, do you have one there, Alexander? Maybe we can have it just in the background. I really want people to see this. You, you really had I just, it's a very compelling argument you made, Alexander. First of all, congratulations on really having the time to spend analyzing your mechanisms of success and how things change over time. That is such an important part of getting better as an operator is to reflect on one's cases and to understand where the growth opportunities are. You clearly showed um, what would likely be a significant improvement in your integrate first based cases. So a decline in retrograde cases and an ADR. And I think, you know, I from, from this view, you really made a compelling argument about how the recross can be so flexible that and still deliverable as you just showed in that third case that you can really take it across more complex, rigid segments. Um, does this really um, becoming your default catheter now for um, upfront most integrated work? Do you ever place regular microcatheters and say, you know, I guess you can't always know if you're going to get it on the first wire and the first cross. And if you need to use a second wire, do you feel like I should just be going with the recross first um, after your, you know, last several years of experience? Yeah, sure. So if you want now, I can share the my screen again to explain you maybe more clearly what is the the anatomic structure of the the recross. Uh, that would be great. I think I'd love for us to just kind of make sure everyone has a clear understanding of this very unique dual lumen. I mean, technically a triple lumen, but a yeah, two port sure. catheter here. Um, this would be great. So you 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 are back in with my screen. It's okay. Yes. So as you can see, recross is there is free exit. Okay, uh, you have a distal one. And you have two laterals exit uh, opposite. So uh, to understand more clearly, I, I have made a, a little uh, video uh, to understand. So in the blue part, there is a, like a mandrin. Uh, so you have just to flush both. Uh, side the blue one and the white one so i will insert my wire in the blue one the blue one as i told you there is only one exit it's a lateral one okay you can see here more clearly where is the exit so it's a mid part of the recross finally then if you uh, are going if inside the white enter you have two possibilities. First is the distal exit. So most of time is it is the one we used. And if you remove a little bit the wire and just turn the tip and push it, and you can see that you are exciting inside the opposite lateral uh one okay so you you have you have the choice with the white one to go distal or lateral so i think it's more clear like this just only with torquing your wire that's super helpful um really great uh, alexander when you are advancing your microcatheter um, presumably, uh, to advance the recross, um, do you take out, if you can spare taking out your wire out of your blue port to re-advance the stylet, has that made a difference in your ability to cross these very rigid segments? Yeah, stylet is uh, quite useful sometimes, uh, but sometimes, uh, most of time, I can tell you, uh, finally, the, the recross 
is uh, more uh, crossable without because is more smooth and it can follow some uh, uh, some tortuosity uh, and it's sometimes better without than with the stylet. Um, great. I'd love to hear Andrew's um, thoughts about this in terms of, you know, seeing Alexander's performance and really the improvement in his integrated success, both with wiring and then second wiring approaches. Um, presumably intraplaque, we, we don't know. Sometimes we can get sub no, sure. extra plaque and come in and out, but presumably intraplaque work. Um, how has this evolved in your practice for how you look at the recross as one of your early or perhaps upfront microcatheters start integrated work? Oh, you're on mute. Uh, I was still struggling to hear you right there. Um, Well, uh, well, well, while Andrew is working on that part, do you, um, and maybe our, our support host can just check in with you um, as we're doing that. Alexander, I think the other thing that you showed, which was very interesting and helpful, which we don't always think about is we, you know, the other dual lumen catheters that are out there, uh, you know, may not have the versatility, but they also may not have the deliverability. And so they're often not used as the upfront microcatheter that is used. One thing that I noticed when you start with the dual lumen uh, with the recross is that you can easily have a side branch anchor yeah, there yeah. as you bring in your second wire. How helpful has that been for you? Has it eliminated your need to do, um, you know, dedicated balloons in your side branches to anchoring guides and things? In fact, finally, most of time with only a wire as an anchor, uh, your support is uh, really uh, better. So. And then the, um, the support of this dual lumen microcatheter is better uh, to puncture uh, the uh, calcified blunt proximal cap with anchoring than without. Uh, the stabilization is better. So sometimes it, it, I, I, when I have a side branch or septal branch or marginal branch or... Uh, I always uh, try to anchor uh, with my uh, blue anchor. So as you can, you have seen, it's a lateral one. Uh, and then when I'm penetrating the CTO, the proximal cap, I remove this blue, uh, the wire in the, inside the blue, and then the dual lumen is uh, now a microcatheter. And this is the big difference with the recross than with the other dual lumen microcatheter. Because... Can you see me now? Yes. Oh, perfect. there you are, Andrew. Welcome, welcome back. That's all <laughs> great. I thought someone at IMDS had decided they wanted to just take me out. <laughs> I, I thought I'd been just, so far and hadn't said anything much. You're just so handsome to look at. We don't really need to hear you. So that's, that's, that's really that, the, That's kind, but that. I know that's untrue. Um, maybe I can We'd love to hear slides. from you, Andrew. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's hear about your cases. So, what's interesting for your perspective is that I think while we have classically, you know, very understood the importance of parallel wiring, we really have this facilitated approach to do this very fast now, with two over the wire options in the recross. Using it for ADR or last types of procedures where we're doing wire-based reentry from the subintimal space mm -hmm. has historically been very challenging um, in Japan yeah. where IVIS is used all the time that can sometimes be aided and you know in Europe it happens as well but not so much in the U.S. to be quite honest IVIS guided anti-grade re-entry mm -hmm. and so most of that work in the United States is done in um, with the controlled device with the stingray balloon uh, stingray has some challenges because it's a bulkier device and as it comes in it will create a bigger space for a hematoma uh, but it adds a lot of you know control so having a non-stingray based approach for controlled re-entry is a very exciting concept. And we look forward to your presentation, Andrew. Great. Well, look, thank, thanks very much for the, uh, the introduction for you. Can, uh, thanks very much for IMDS for, uh, for allowing me to share our experience. And yeah, 
what I'm going to try and talk to you about over the next 15, 20 minutes or so is our uh, experience of Recross. So we've had the device on the shelf for around about 18 months. Uh, and I'm going to come at this uh, more from, you know, my background, which is as someone uh, who uh, values ADR. Uh, and I'm going to give you a bit of background as to the evolution of our program. Uh, I'm going to talk you through some of the relevant aspects of the device that uh, Dr. Avran's already done that to a certain degree, but I'm really going to focus on uh, the useful aspects of the device design that facilitates ADR. I'm going to take you through a couple of cases and hopefully uh, those cases bookend really our experience uh, with the device where we started out with it and where we've come from. Uh, and hopefully I can share with you a little bit about what we've learned. So briefly about our program, uh, I, I feel already uh, diminutive compared to Dr. Avram. We do around about 130 cases a year uh, on dedicated lists. We do more cases than that uh, on some non-selective lists, simple, straightforward, integrated wiring. But in terms of what we believe to be more complex cases, we do about 130 a year with two consultant operators on a dedicated list. We are very much uh, hybrid operators. We're not wedded to any particular strategy or device. We are just interested in opening the artery safely uh, and efficiently. Uh, we are proficient uh, Stingray CrossBoss operators, and that very much was our go-to ADR device. Uh, although our practice has certainly changed uh, somewhat over the last uh, over the last eighteen months or so, with Recross uh, in our hands. To give you an idea of, uh, of of roughly what we do and where we're at in terms of strategy, uh, you can see we quite like ADR. Uh, about 25% of our cases are successfully completed uh, using ADR. Uh, as you would envisage, the amount of dissection re-entry uh, used, the proportion yeah. is greater. Yeah. Andrew, are you trying to share your screen right now? <laughs> yeah. You're not seeing this. Uh, let's see if you can get that up for um, us to review. Very How's good. That? That's starting to come up. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. That'd be nice. That's going to make things easy. <clears throat> we were visualizing. We had a good good vision, but um, this is better. Good. Okay. So, yeah, as 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 you can see, we we quite like ADR. We do about uh, 20, 25 percent of our cases. Uh, final strategy uh, is uh, anti-grade dissection re-entry. As for most hybrid programs, you know, as we've become more complex, we are using uh, dissection re-entry techniques more commonly to complete the procedure. In terms of looking at where we've got to with Recross specifically, in the 18 months or so we've had the device, we've done 35 cases. Uh, we've been successful on uh, in 86 percent of those. We've had no device related complications. We've delivered the device to the re-entry zone uh, every time. Uh, that's, uh, and some of those cases have been pretty challenging in terms of calcium and tortuosity. Uh, and all failures uh, have ultimately been due to inability to re-enter the true lumen at the distal landing. So in terms of the device design, I know uh, Dr. Avran's been through this a little bit, but I'll just give you my take. Um, the this is a unique device. It's an over-the-wire double hub dual lumen microcatheter. Um, so as discussed, you've got uh, through your white tip port, uh, an exit port right at the tip of the, of the catheter. You've got a side exit port 12 mil millimeters back. When you remove your uh, stilet from the blue port, you then have another side access port facing the opposite direction, which is uh, eight millimeters back from the tip. It's a pretty slender device. It's got a, a distal crossing profile of one and a half French. Uh, it's 2.3 French when it's in the guide catheter. Uh, so it's easily trappable uh, inside a six French guide. If we look at how it compares with a standard uh, rapid exchange dual lumen microcatheter, you can, uh, th there are advantages. Uh, and that is that you can easily exchange, as long as you're comfortable with trapping, you can easily exchange both guide wires without losing position. And because of the additional side port, you've got 360 degree access to the vessel. 
So essentially that means that you can use it for all of the same indications and uses and in situations you would normally use a, a rapid exchange dual lumen microcatheter. But there are additional uses that are unique to the device. Uh, and Dr. Avran has been through some of those. They relate to uh, the ability to redirect anti-grade wires or parallel wires, but they also allow you uh, many more options when you are in the sub space, distal to the occlusion segment. I'd like to expand on, uh, on what Dr. Azram has said about deliverability <clears throat> by telling you, you know, in my, certainly in our experience, this device is extremely deliverable uh, and I think is one of the biggest advantages of it. Um, it's got a core wire that runs close to the tip back to the hub. It's got braiding around the blue port uh, and as we've discussed, it's got a removable stellet. Uh, and I can tell you unequivocally that it is extremely deliverable. Uh, with and without the stellet in, uh, it is more deliverable than Stingray when you're tracking uh, around occlusions in the sub space. Um, and again, as Dr. Avran said, I think most of the time I've, I've got to say we deliver it with the stellet in place. We find that that is better. But there are certainly times, probably when you're tracking luminal plaque, where taking the stellet out does increase your, uh, your ability to deliver it. But most of the time we're delivering it with the stellet in place. Down at the distal end. The important features of the device are that it's ovoid in cross section, so it tends to self orientate in the sub intimal space. You end up with an exit port then facing out to the pericardium, which is rarely of, uh, of any great use, uh, and an exit port facing back towards the uh, true lumen, which is where you are aiming. Because you've got this uh, double hub and dual lumen setup, you've got more options uh, when you are in the sub space distal to the lesion. You can use the second access port uh, to, to simultaneously decompress the sub space. So obviously you can, you, you can perform that uh, with Stingray, but uh, you can't perform it at the same time as you're uh, trying to re-enter from the other port. So this is a unique feature of the device. The other thing you can do, the other thing you can use the second access port for is to leave a wire in the sub interval space, uh, which we found increases your penetrative force with your re-entry wire. So I'm gonna show you a couple of cases. Um, this is the first case we use recross in, in Oxford. Um, this is, uh, it was a 74 year old chap, standard risk factors for coronary disease, stable angina, uh, occluded right coronary artery, fully viable ventricle with ongoing symptoms. These are, his, this is a, his initial diagnostic angiogram, so beginning of 2019. Let that play and you can make your own interpretation of that, certainly was ours. This is a proximal uh, right occlusion, blunt proximal cap, modest in length. Standout feature really was the burden of calcium, which extends uh, very distally in the vessel, right out past uh, the crux of the right coronary, and there's some tortuosity within segment as well. Good distal landing zone, no side branches at the distal cap, reasonable interventional collaterals, and if you uh, wanted to go retrograde, that certainly would be a very reasonable option. So we scored it as a JCTO3, we thought all options were on the table. It first came onto the list of one of my colleagues, who's a very experienced operator, but not a CTO operator. Uh, he had dual access at that time, <clears throat> excuse me, and used a microcatheter. Uh, but ultimately made a failed attempt at anti-grade wiring with the mechanism of failure being an inability to penetrate the proximal cap, which you could possibly predict from the setup there. This is the first attempt we made on a dedicated list a few months later. So I'll let the uh, dual access images just play for a second. So we went up front here with, a, with an anti-grade strategy, turnpike spiral, Confianza Pro 12 to puncture the cap. The wire uh, passed into the sub space, which is perhaps predictable. We're not worried about that. Uh, we set up for, hopefully this is gonna run. So we set up here for ADR, guide extension in. We took a cross boss in with a pilot 200 knuckle. Um, 
and then we spent quite a considerable amount of time trying to get down through uh, through this lesion and through uh, and around this secluded segment. So, I mean, anyone who uses uh, CrossBOS and Stingray will know this is going to be a challenging case due to the burden of calcification and the tortuosity. So we did, after significant with significant effort, get the CrossBOS down towards the distal vessel. We needed to redirect on several occasions with a pilot with uh, a pilot two hundred knuckle again. And we ended up with uh, a knuckle down towards the in the distal vessel, but really we were a little bit unsure where that was. I've not given you a retrograde injection here, but you can kind of appreciate it, it's, it's slightly unclear where that knuckle is lying. So we thought at this point we'll switch to retrograde. We may well complete the procedure successfully retrograde and certainly we will help define the anatomy. So we cross relatively easily uh, into the RPDA with a scion and a field of XTR but we could not get the uh, microcatheter to, uh, to follow. This was particularly frustrating. So we spent about 30 or 40 minutes here. We got the retrograde wire right up sub past the proximal cap. Uh, we pinned the wire with an antigrade balloon. We took a guide extension to the donor guide. We ballooned uh, the proximal portion of the septal. Uh, we switched out and tried a caravel and a fine cross. Couldn't get any to cross. So we switched back in a slightly frustrated fashion here to ADR and took a stingray in. Um, and again, those of us who use uh, stingray and cross boss in this kind of situation uh, will understand that we could not deliver that without ballooning the antigrade tract. We did eventually get it down to the distal landing zone in the distal right and then spent another frustrating 30 or 40 minutes trying to re-enter that horrible calcified landing zone. So we used Confianza Pro 12 wires, uh, Stingray wires, we had the, the retrograde wire as a marker, but ultimately we were unable to re-enter the true lumen. And that was really related to the volume of calcium. So it's one of those cases where you really, it was really very challenging to even get the wire tip to, uh, to exit the Stingray catheter. So with our tail between our legs, we ballooned the proximal cap, ballooned the body, uh, and ended up with this <clears throat> uh, final appearance. So there's no holes, but it's certainly a uh, fairly miserable final appearance. There's certainly no, we haven't created any obvious anti-grade channels. So he came back a few months later. As I say, this was our first recross uh, case in Oxford. So depressingly, despite all of that, the, the apparent occlusion length now appears longer, which is uh, unusual, but does happen. So we set, up a, we set up here for a strategy of ADR. Obviously, we've got recross on the shelf. We thought we should give this, we should give this a whirl. Why not? Uh, so uh, it was still pretty challenging to repuncture uh, the proximal cap and get down through this vessel. So we used uh, Fielder XT, Pilot 200 Knuckles, Turnpike Spiral. Initially, we tracked out luminally, checked on IVUS into that RV marginal branch, redirected with an S base into the subintimal space in the distal vessel. And these pictures give you some idea of the fixed sort of tortuosity going on down in that mid and distal right. So the picture on the right is the, when the recross has been trapped in with the stylet in place. And you can just see how, uh, how fixed that vessel is. But having run in on a Miracle 12 wire, we then took it down to the distal landing zone and made a first pass uh, re-entry into true lumen with the CP12. So we were, uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's, it's fair to say we'd been here before. We'd created a channel uh, and a tract antigradely through the subintimal space before, but I can tell you it was, it was a fair chew to get back down the vessel again this time. So we were really pretty impressed at, number one, how deliverable the device was. Uh, but also number two, how much support it uh, provided and uh, allowed you to re-enter back into that horrible sort of distal vessel. So we exchanged out for workhorse wire, do the usual IVUS stent, and that's the final result. So that was our early experience. I've got a case now that shows you some of our more recent experience. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's, 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 it's a very different flavour of a case, but it gives you some idea of, you know, where we see the device now in terms of its versatility uh, and in terms of how we might approach a case uh, with recross. 
So this is an elderly-ish chap. Uh, again, uh, he's got stable angina, standard risk factors, single vessel disease with a chronically occluded right, preserved left ventricular systolic function, refractory symptoms. So initial angiogram in March of last year, and you can see this is a more straightforward case straight away. So these are the single access uh, setup shots. So our interpretation of that was a mid-right uh, occlusion, unambiguous but blunt proximal cap, modest occlusion length, again, probably a little bit shorter, no significant calcium or tortuosity this time, good landing zone, again, all options are on the table. We scored that as a, a JCTO2. He came back. And uh, there was a little bit of delay. I think that was related to COVID. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed and impressed with the number of cases that Dr. Avram did through the uh, COVID period. We were we certainly shut down from a CTO point of view for, for, for a decent while. So these are dual pictures. They probably add not too much apart from, you know, it's not a massively long occlusion. It looks relatively straightforward. Um, and you think you, you may well wire this integrally. But this just shows you know how useful the device is so we have put a workhorse wire in the side branch tip port into the side branch we then use the side port to puncture out dr adam showed you a variation of using the the, the, the ports the other way around a little bit of a push we hoped we were luminal in many ways there, but we're not. We uh, extend out the PLV. It's close to the vessel, but it's not in. So we routinely uh, would uh, exchange out for a workhorse wire and probe gently to see whether we were true lumen or not. We were not true lumen, and we knew from the IVUS at the end of the case that we, this was definitely a subintimal reentry case. Um, so we passed down and exchanged using the recross now as a single lumen catheter exchanged out for a miracle 12 wire and then again this in real time on the right hand uh, side the bigger picture uh, is uh, a re-entry from sub intimal space to true lumen with a confianza pro 12. so we switch out and take the recross in along on the tip port Use that to use the recross to exchange for a cyan blue wire, which we park in the PLV. And then we back the device out and put a second uh, cyan blue wire into uh, the blue port. And we use it as a standard dual access uh, microcatheter to then put a wire in the PDA. So the nice aspect here of this, this kind of case is, you know, using the, re this was the only microcatheter we used for this case. So we're using it to facilitate proximal cap puncture. We use it to uh, facilitate wire exchange in the distal vessel. It allows us to re-enter from sub intimal space back to true lumen, exchange the wire again, and then wire an important side branch uh, distal to the occlusion. So really, really nice sort of, you know, demonstration of how versatile it can be. So, you know, my take homes from this in terms of what we've learned is number one, it's an excellent device for, for facilitating ADR. It's safe to use and it's easy to use. And Dr. Avran showed you when you, you know, you take it out of the packet, you take the stilette out, you flush both ports with saline, you put the stilette back in, it's good to go. It's excellent for facilitating proximal cap puncture uh, at the site of a side branch. It's extremely deliverable. Uh, even in uh, very challenging anatomy. It allows you this ability to simultaneously decompress your subintimal space or leave a wire or leave a wire in the subintimal space to up uh, uplift your penetrative force. Uh, and whether you do that or not, it provides you a stable base for redirecting wires from the subintimal space to the true lumen. It's very versatile uh, as an anti-grade microcaster, and we've seen some of the uses uh, there. It allows you to do everything you can do with a rapid exchange dual lumen microcatheter, but it tends to make uh, all of those activities uh, more straightforward. For example, if you're trying to wire, trying to use it to help wire a uh, difficult to access side branch, you've got more options because if you use a standard rapid exchange uh, microcatheter, you've got 180 degrees of 
or you know of reach with recross you've got 360 so if one of your ports is facing the wrong direction the other one is very likely to be facing in the right direction because so you, you, you can't talk you can't talk a standard uh, dual lumen microcatheter once in the vessel it goes in and it sits where it's going to sit uh, and Dr. Avram has, uh, has, has ably shown you how you can use it as a dual access anti-grade microcatheter. So from my point of view, it, the key world strengths are that it's an excellent device for facilitating ADR. It's safe and easy to use. It delivers extremely well to the distal landing zone. It allows you the ability to simultaneously decompress the subintimal space whilst you're puncturing with your through the other port into the true lumen. And it gives excellent support for controlled re-entry when used in that fashion. Um, as we've seen, in addition, it's an extremely versatile uh, anti-grade microcatheter. And I think, you know, from, from my point of view, I think it likely where it has a very important role is, uh, is in uh, where you've got operators with good anti-grade wiring skills who are looking to expand their skill set and move from uh, uh, AWE to ADR type procedures because this device is very easy to use, it's intuitive and it facilitates the, uh, the anti-grade wire, the, the, you know, the chance of being successful anti-grade wire cases anyhow. So thanks very much. I'm glad eventually you could hear me and see some of my slides. Thanks so much, Andrew. Um, really great presentation, super informative, lots of um, great discussion points about um, improving our ability and our success rates for integrated dissection reentry, which I think we would probably all say is the least predictable of success methods that we have for solving CTOs. Um, I would love to have the a chat be active. Please feel free to ask any questions during our, our last uh, eight minutes or so of discussion. But um, Andrew, I think you make, you know, a really compelling point here, particularly more challenging hostile vessels with calcium. Um, once you balloon the subintimal space, hematoma management becomes a very big issue. Yeah. And yeah. do you believe now that in more complicated, this might be paradoxical because the Stingray is a more stable device, if you will, because it'll be balloon inflated and anchored in there. Um, but do you believe perhaps in the more hostile devices that, a recross over a small knuckle um, might be an alternative to going up front with the stingray. And then, how do you how do you manage that distinction? Do I want to start recross? Do I want to start stingray? How do you how do you manage that? Yeah, I, I think I think it definitely is a viable alternative, and I'm surprised to hear myself say that when uh, the principal the principal perceived limitation I had when I first saw the device. Um, was that uh, I, I wasn't sure whether it, ha you know, I wasn't sure it was going to provide any sort of stable platform in the subintimal space. But surprisingly, uh, if you use it in the right way, and I think the, the key to, to, to using recross is really be super careful. I mean, the same applies when you're, you know, doing re-entry work with Stingray. You've got to be very careful with how distal you go with your knuckles, trying to control your knuckle. I think the, the, Key with recross is to try and use, try and complete the final subintimal, the, the final portion of your tract with the device itself, because it is a small device. It will create its own tract. So, you know, what you can do is finish off the tract with the recross, which is in some ways similar to finishing it off with the recross, uh, finishing it with the cross boss. So you've got a small distal portion at the end. But I think the other advantage it gives you is because you it's so deliverable, we've never had to balloon uh, the, 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 the track to get the device down, is that I think you, because these things are interrelated, aren't they? If you don't need to balloon the track, you're not creating such a, uh, you're not creating as much subintimal hematoma. So I think that, 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 that's, a, that that's a key thing. So do I think, you know, which device would I use in a hostile situation? I've got to tell you, I don't know at the moment. And that's one of my biggest, I think that's for me in the ADR space, the biggest question to answer. I think it is, it's difficult to know, but recross is certainly, uh, certainly very effective in hostile environments. So I think there will be, uh, I think that question is still to be answered in, in exactly what tells you or what indicators there are to one uh, using Stingray versus recross. 
I, I can't give you a definitive answer, but it's uh, but it's certainly a strong competitor. And I think anything we've got which allows or causes competition, so that um, you know we've got more products and more devices on the shelf that can do a good job. These things are only good at sort of uh, driving things forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, comments? Yes, Alexander. Yeah, Andrew. So. Uh... I am still a Stingray user, and you need to convince me um, how Recross is, you are able with the Recross to know where you are in the space as you are able to be with the Stingray balloon. Because Stingray balloon, everybody knows there is two, two points, two lines, and you need to, to, to find a projection where your two lines are parallel, then you are sure that you are in a profile view, and you know exactly if you need to puncture up or down. But I don't, I, I, I don't know how to do the same with the recross. So mm -hmm. just explain me how do you deal with this uh, situation? <clears throat> Yeah, in, in, in much the same way, you're finding a, you're taking a retrograde injection. And you're finding a, a, a projection where you can uh, appreciate where the two exit ports are. You have to, and in, in my experience, it's not that dissimilar to Stingray. Sometimes you know where it is. Sometimes it lies beautifully, you know, under the vessel or over the vessel in one projection. You know which way you're going. But sometimes with Stingray, you have to take a wire and exit a port to to ascertain whether you're going going in the right direction or not and it's much the same i think with um uh with recross you find a projection where it's lying over or under the vessel you you can see the exit ports as you as you know if you take a magged up view with a flora acquisition and then you explore with a wire and work out where you are i, I think the advantage of recross in that situation is it's very easy to if you're out the wrong port it's then very easy to withdraw your wire go in through the other hub uh, and access the uh, the port facing in the other direction and again as you know particularly in tortuous calcific uh, vessels with the stingray down sometimes it's very difficult to get out the port that you want to get out of sure great comments there is a comment from the chat um about asking um a strategy question regarding the safety and efficacy of parallel wiring versus knuckling to reach the distal cap. So more of a general kind of anti-grade dissection approach. Um, um, how do you guys uh, feel about that? Is um, how often do you try to really avoid doing a knuckle? And we do have some tighter knuckle wirings now that are available with the Mongo wire and the Fielder XT can also create a small knuckle, but every now and then this can still get large. How do you guys approach your distinction about, am I really ready to knuckle? This is obviously something Japanese try to avoid at almost all costs, or do I continue with parallel wire and maybe risk a perforation if I stiffen my wire? The point is uh, the anatomy of the course of the vessel. If you know exactly the, the course of the vessel uh, using parallel wire, is safe but if you are a num you have an ambiguity on the anatomic uh or there is like the andrew's case a uh, very torturous and calcified part we know that the the wire will uh, uh will get straight forward and not uh following the curve of the vessel so in that situation uh, knuckle is safer. We know that, but uh, so it depends. Finally, the the curse of the vessel, the length of the CTO. Yeah, so I think I'd broadly answer the same. I mean, I think certainly in in my hands, a knuckle wire is safer if there's ambiguity. I think there's no doubt that knuckling is safer, but it also depends on the anatomy at, uh, at the distal end of the occlusion. So if you've got an important side branch, and probably the LAD is the obvious one that jumps to mind, isn't it? If you've got an occlusion in the LAD with a big diagonal coming off close to the distal cap, that's a situation where you want to 
you know, where your, uh, your safest option is to stay uh, luminous if you can. So, uh, you know, I don't do a lot of parallel wiring, but I think where, where um, you might want to do that is that kind of situation where I'm talking about. Um, and having a recross taken down into the lesion and then giving you options at the distal cap to try and, if you've gone sub intimal to try and puncture uh, back into the true lumen right at the distal cap. I think that's potentially where recross uh, has a strong advantage in that, con in, you know, within the context of parallel wiring or anti-grade wire redirection, whatever people like to call it. Super. Well, I think we are at the end of our hour. Um, I would like to take this moment to um, really summarize the, the features of the recross. Really, uh, hopefully our viewers have seen some remarkable cases about the versatility, having the flexibility without having to use multiple microcatheters to be able to take different tacks and angles, both intraplaque and potentially extra plaque in the subintimal space. A single catheter that can do this um, can really help accelerate cases and also preserve side branch preservation um, uh, throughout the course of the CTO. So I, I hope you have all enjoyed the cases. I would like to very much thank my colleagues, Dr. Avron and Dr. Lucking for really showing these great cases. Thank you for your time and putting them together. And of course, we'd like to thank IMDS for sponsoring this educational seminar. Um, please feel free to reach out to any of us if there are any questions and follow up and um, we hope you all have a great evening as well. Thank you. Thanks, Farouk. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.